I'm DK Oji. I work at the College of Health Sciences of University of Abuja and I also practice cardiology at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital and the principal investigator of the CREW study, which uh, means comparison of three combinations of antihypertensive therapy in blacks residing in sub-Saharan Africa. We started the study in June 2017 and concluded it in June 2018. And this study was brought about because in spite of the high prevalence of hypertension in blacks residing in sub-Saharan Africa and the complications associated with it, like heart failure, cerebral vascular accident, and also chronic kidney insufficiency, we don't have enough data to push us to the best therapy in this group of people, especially best combination therapy. As we all know, um, most patients with high blood pressure will require two or more medications to control their blood pressure, especially the black population, which falls within the difficult to treat hypertension group. So what we did in this study was to compare three combinations of two drug antihypertensive uh, therapy. And these combinations were amlodipine and hydrochlorothiazide at one end, amlodipine perindopri at the other end, and also perindopri hydrochlorothiazide. We wanted to know the ability of these medications to reduce mean 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure, and that was going to be our primary endpoint. So what we did was that we randomized patients from 10 sites in six sub-Saharan African countries of Nigeria, of Cameroon, of Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, and Mozambique. So what, this, what made patients to be included were if they had a blood pressure of 140 millimeters of mercury and above, but less than 160 millimeters of mercury, and they were on one antihypertensive medication or monotherapy. Or if they have a blood pressure of 150 millimeters of mercury and above, but less than 180 millimeters of mercury, and they are treatment naive, meaning that they are not on any therapy, they were, uh, they were, they were eligible to be included into the study, provided they signed informed consent. And patients were both male and female, and they must be age 30 to 79 years. And apart from having the ambulatory blood pressure done at baseline at six months, we also did office blood pressure monitoring for them, both at baseline as at the second month, the fourth month, at the sixth month. And also at baseline and at six months, these patients had their fasting blood sugar, fasting lipid profile, and electrolyte urea and creatinine also checked because we wanted to know, apart from adverse reaction, what was the effect of this combination therapy on their metabolic profile and also their renal profile. Now, so after six months, we were able to randomize 728 patients. And when we analyzed these patients, we found out that patients that had amlodipine and hydrochlorothiazide and also amlodipine and perindopri had their blood pressure better controlled than those that had perindopri and hydrochlorothiazide. That was what we found. In fact, we found out that the amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide combination reduced mean ambulatory systolic blood pressure by about 3.14 millimeters of mercury, while amlodipine perindopri did the same by about 3 millimeters of mercury when we compared with perindopri and hydrochlorothiazide. And when we looked at the clinic blood pressure, we also found that amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide and amlodipine perindopri did better than perindopri hydrochlorothiazide. But amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide reduced the office blood pressure by about 7.1 millimeters of mercury compared to perindopri hydrochlorothiazide. Why amlodipine perindopri did the same by about 5.6 millimeters of mercury. So based on this, we felt that amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide and amlodipine perindopri are more efficacious compared to perindopri hydrochlorothiazide. However, we also looked at their side effect profile. And what we found out, I mean, um, the side effect we saw were those that are normally reported in day-to-day -day clinical practice, uh, expectedly dry cough 
and Anjo Idima were found only in patients who received perindopril. Um, and Anjo Idima was found only in about 1% of these patients. In addition, uh, pedal swelling was found mainly in patients who received calcium channel blocker, which is in keeping with the side effect, and was found in about 3.9% of these patients. Now, so when we put this together, we also found out that patients that were on amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide, when we looked at their metabolic profile, had hypokalemia. In about 5.3% of them, they had hypokalemia. That means low potassium lower less than 3.2. There were no adverse effects in other metabolic profile like fasting blood sugar, fasting lip and fasting lipid profile. So when we keep, when we put all this together, we came to the conclusion that amongst all the three commonly used combinations in sub-Saharan Africa, amlodipine hydrochlorothiazide and amlodipine perindopril are favored. However, the choice depends on the physician. We have to look at the side, if, side effect profile and individualize our patients. Thank you very much.